Elon Musk just made an urgent announcement Starship update. After the first launch test didn't go as planned, SpaceX is getting ready to launch its Starship rocket one more time, with a second attempt scheduled for mid-November. Most crucially, SpaceX's next Starship test launch could lift off right on Friday, pending regulatory approval from the Federal Aviation Administration and other agencies. In fact, last weekend, SpaceX destacked Ship 25 from Booster 9. This was the sixth destack of S-25, and hopefully the last. The hot staging ring was also removed. But probably it'll be best for us if we stop guessing altogether if this will be the final stack, because, ah, uh, there's always another one, isn't there? And Elon Musk just made an urgent announcement. What is it all about? Let's find out in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St where we bring you the most recent news about Elon Musk and his multi-billion dollar companies, space news, and the latest science and technology. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our amazing videos. In the first three minutes of the upcoming Starship test flight, SpaceX will have answers to several urgent concerns. Were the improvements made to the Starship launch pad in Texas sufficient to withstand the rocket's strong thrust? Are the Raptor engines on the rocket more reliable than they were during the first Starship test flight in April? Did the super heavy booster of the rocket safely detach from the Starship upper stage? The answers to these concerns will demonstrate how fast SpaceX can proceed with all its other Starship related goals. Launching Starlink Internet satellites is one of the next steps, which will speed up the network's ability to establish direct connections with consumer cell phones. NASA requires SpaceX to test in-orbit refueling for Starship flights to the moon, and engineers want to show off retrieving the spacecraft's massive booster in upper stage, steps that are essential to achieving full reusable rockets. However, the rocket has to first reach space. That did not occur on April 20, the first full-scale test flight of Starship. But SpaceX gained a lot of knowledge from that flight. As the Super Heavy booster produced almost 15 million pounds of thrust from its methane-fueled Raptor engines, engineers discovered they needed to strengthen the launch mount, which was damaged. Beneath the pedestal that the Starship rocket rests on during the countdown, there is a water-cooled steel plate on the upgraded launch pad. According to SpaceX, the water deluge design will be more capable of withstanding the heat and noise generated during liftoff by the Super Heavy booster. Even though the rocket that eventually became Starship was originally shown by SpaceX seven years ago, the program is still very much in the experimental stage. The design is continuously improved by engineers who identify issues, address them, and conduct tests. Therefore, the purpose of the second full-scale Starship test launch is primarily learning opportunities. However, some results are better than others. Let's face it. What should SpaceX reveal? The second Starship test flight from SpaceX's launch site close to Brownsville, Texas may occur as early as Monday morning and next week. On the other hand, there's plenty of time to do this before the net Friday launch. Consider this, the most probable issues can arise from either grid fin motors or avionics hardware. Besides that, we also found that Ship 25 lost a tile, so they should have destacked for that reason. In any case, this makes sure that the Mechazilla system gets a constant workout. Now. There is great news. The issues that led to the IFT-1 ending the way it did have all been addressed. There's a failure during IFT-2, it'll be for something completely different. That's right, there shouldn't be any repeat failures, hopefully. SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk also has more confidence in this version of the Ship 25. He expressed this in a tweet in September, in which he wrote, much higher chance of success than Flight 1. This time. I think we have around 50% probability of reaching orbital velocity. He wrote in another tweet earlier in August. However, even getting to stage separation would be a win, Musk added to his statement. But in order to come to the final conclusion, the Federal Aviation Administration needs to issue a launch license for a second test to be attempted first. The regulator completed its safety review of Starship back in October, but the project still needs a sign-off from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for the license to be given. Well, FWS, Elon Musk wants to buy a fishing license. According to a recent episode of Lex Fritman's podcast, Love That Guy, Musk recently shared his opinion on the regulatory challenges faced by both his companies, shedding light on the often bizarre and humorous nature of bureaucratic hurdles. 
Mosk's anecdotes touch on issues ranging from obtaining fish licenses for rocket launches to conducting experiments with seals wearing headphones. This is the extensive regulatory scrutiny Tesla faces in the automotive sector. He notes that the company is subject to oversight from over 100 regulatory agencies, both domestically and internationally. The sheer volume of regulations is emphasized by Musk's remark that the regulations could fill an entire room. This regulatory landscape underscores the complexity and meticulous adherence required in the automotive industry. Drawing parallels between automotive and space endeavors, Musk highlights the regulatory challenges faced by SpaceX, particularly concerning the Starship launch. While the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA for short, has granted approval, Musk reveals that regulatory approval from the FWS is pending. This unexpected intersection of space launches and wildlife regulation prompts Musk's humorous suggestion to purchase a fishing license. The narrative takes a turn towards marine life, as Musk describes concerns about rockets hitting sharks. He points out the rarity of shark sightings in the vast ocean and the challenge of calculating the probability of encountering a shark. The comedic element is heightened when Musk reveals that regulatory authorities were hesitant to share data with another department within their own organization, leading to a comical internal quandary. The tale continues with the unexpected involvement of an organization concerned about the potential impact of rocket launches on whales in international waters. Musk questions the logic behind this concern, emphasizing the vastness of the ocean and the minimal likelihood of hitting a whale. The narrative unfolds with Musk's skepticism about the perceived threat to whales and the bizarre bureaucratic process involved. Procreation concerns related to sonic booms during rocket launches from Vandenberg in California. Despite the steady increase in the sail population following numerous rocket launches, authorities insisted on conducting experiments involving seals wearing headphones. The imagery of a seal strapped to a board with headphones on is a surreal and rather entertaining element to the narrative. The absurdity reaches its peak when Musk recounts the need to kidnap a seal twice for the same experiment. The concept of obtaining a seal of approval becomes a playful punt in this context. Musk's storytelling unveils the links to which regulatory processes can go, showcasing the peculiarities and, at times, the irrationality of bureaucratic decision-making. All in all, I hope that the delay won't be too long. We could see the Starship take off this week or at least this month. In other related news, a top Department of Transportation official suggested the launch industry should help pay for additional resources for the FAA's Commercial Space Office. Speaking at a virtual meeting of the FAA's Commercial Space Transportation Advisory Committee, or COMSTAC, November 8, Polly Trottember, Deputy Secretary of Transportation, all but rejected calls from industry to sharply increase the budget of the FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation, or AST to deal with growing levels of launch activity. At an October 18 hearing by the Senate Commerce Committee Space Subcommittee, industry witnesses recommended a significant increase in the budget for that office, which received nearly $37.6 million in the fiscal year of 2023 to hire more personnel to handle launch and re-entry licensing. One witness, Bill Gerstemeyer of SpaceX, specifically recommended doubling the office's budget. Berg said, there were competing priorities elsewhere in the FAA noting that aviation did not receive as much support in last year's bipartisan infrastructure law as other modes of transportation. I don't think we made the commensurate investments that were needed on the aviation side. Put some investments into airports, but not into the bread and butter systems of the FAA. A tree to contribute some portion of additional revenues needed for enhancing the AST. We're an agency that has the ability to generate revenues, and I think that's going to be a question for this industry and for other industries writing that she was offering her own opinion and not that of the department itself. While the FAA does generate revenue from user fees for aviation, it has not generally collected any such fees for launch licensing. She returned to it later in the meeting when another Comstack member noted the relatively small size of the AST budget relative to the overall FAA budget. The FAA requested $19.8 billion for the fiscal year of 2024, of which $42 million would go to the AST. She described the tensions between the launch industry and the commercial aviation industry on access to airspace, and criticism from the launch industry that proposed the FAA guidelines for deconflicting airspace uses appeared to favor aviation. I wanted to chalk a little bit because admittedly commercial aviation funds most of the agency. She argued that while the AST's budget and the request it increases a small fraction of the overall FAA budget, every penny gets fought over. She mentioned competing priorities 
such as investing in technologies to address a recent series of near misses in aviation. You can say each little piece doesn't cost that much, but when you kind of add it all together the agency has big needs writ large. Her views were seasoned by a 4.5-month stint earlier this year as acting FAA administrator. That included, she said, in a lot of, I think sort of the interagency parts of commercial space. Working with the White House and other agencies. A lot of collaboration, sometimes some steered in engagement. One factor driving the industry's desire to increase the FAA's budget is the demands of a new licensing regime for commercial launches called Part 450. While designed to be streamlined, some of the first companies to use that new licensing process have complained of delays. Gerster Mayer at the October hearing warned. The entire regulatory system is at risk of collapse as the FAA moves vehicles operating under older licenses to the new system. The regulations and the time and complexity of completing an application said Michael O'Donnell, Deputy Associate Administrator of Commercial Space Transportation at the FAA during the Comstack meeting. He argued that the four licenses issued to date under Part 450 were all for new vehicles, which required substantial iterations during the license review process. The FAA believes that future Part 450 evaluations will be completed in a timely way. Comstack members were not necessarily convinced. Karen Shina Work, a consultant who previously worked for Relativity Space and SpaceX, argued new companies using the PAR 450 processes are at a potential disadvantage to existing companies with older licenses. Yeah, I'm just, I'm quite concerned with what I see as it looking like a hindrance to newer entrants and that it's affecting potential competition among providers, launch operators. In your opinion, is this suggestion reasonable? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Down below, otherwise folks that's about it for today's episode thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. By the way, are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app? Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door. For more information, download the Talk Talk app here down below.